Welcome back to the 21 Convention, 2021 of Orlando, Florida, 15 year anniversary at 21 Summit. Our next speaker is a returning speaker to the 21 Convention, first speaking last year in Orlando, Florida here at 21 Summit. He's also the founder of Bond, founded over 31 years ago out in California. He's an amazing man, or amazing, as some of you might already know, and he's a pastor and a reverend for uh, Christian men. Without further ado, please help me welcome back to the 21 Convention stage, Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome back, Jesse. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning. How y'all? I'm still sleepy from because we got in like really late last night. So I got to wake up. First, I want to say congratulations to Anthony and 21 Summit. 15 years, that's amazing. Bond has been around. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. I was saying to Anthony earlier that uh, Bond been around 31 years, but it doesn't seem to be 31 years. And he felt the same way. And I really admire uh, Anthony for what he's done because he started off as a, what, teenager? How old were you? 17. 17 when he first started this organization. And it proves that if men really, 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 really want to do something, they can. But you have to have a made up mind and you must be willing to endure all things in order to succeed in life. But I've been around 31 years. And then I want to take some questions from you guys, right? Because I like talking dealing with the folks. But Bob been around 31 years and our purpose is to rebuild the family by rebuilding a man. And, and the reason I started Bond 30, uh, uh, the purpose of rebuilding a man because when I first started, I realized that black men were weak and that they were blaming and that they were crying racism and they had leaders and they thought that, that uh, white people were their problems. And I realized that it's not racism, it's not, they don't need leaders, they need to take charge of their own life. So we started Bond in order to wake black Americans up to tell them that it's abnormal for a man to be weak. Do we have any weak men here? Can I see your hand? <laughs> Nobody want to admit it, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry I said that first. But, uh, and so we started out with just dealing with black men, but after a while, the principles that we talk about apply to all the men, mankind, so we open it up to everyone. And so 31 years later, we are dealing with men around the world, men and women now, because the women are like, oh, we need help, we need help. So we started working with women as well. And I know I'm speaking tomorrow to, I guess, married men and family like that, I think. And today, all you guys are single men for the most part, right? Yep. Yep. We know. I'm sorry? Widower. What? Widower. Widow. Oh, okay. And uh, so what I want to talk about is, well, first, I want to let you know that there's an order to life, and that order is God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, and woman over children. And it's abnormal abnormal for men to be emotional, for men to be angry. Oh, any, any male have, any man here has anger? Oh, good. Let me see your hand again. So it's, I know it's early, but you can, we can talk. Nobody watching, just around the world. <laughs> Let me see the guys with anger. Oh, okay. Um, did you know that any man that has anger is a woman? Hi, ladies. <laughs> Did you know that? Any man that has anger is a woman? I got a bitch in me. I don't like her. Right. <laughs> you a bitch, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Any man that has anger is a bitch. I love that word. I used, uh, at first they said, don't say that word in L.A. That's a, that's a mean word. But that word explains everything. And so what we want to do today, this morning, is to show you how to overcome that anger because it's totally abnormal for a man to have anger. Men are not angry. They are uh, logical. They, they deal with things in a simple way and they have no fear and no doubt. So what I want to do this morning, because some of you like slap makers too, right? 
a lot of slap makers? Yes. Who want to be a slap maker? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I want to talk to you about the anger with the hat. Can you go to the mic? Me? Uh-huh. The one that's got the bitch in him. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. And so, and so you have the bitch in you. I got the bitch in me, yeah. And what does the bitch feel like? Bitter. Bitter? Bitter. Bitter. And you've been married before? Uh, married, divorced, married, widowed. Really? Yeah. And what happened with, why did you divorce the first time around? Well, I didn't divorce. She did. And why? <laughs> that one's complex. Which one do you want? My failings or hers? Yours. Mine. Didn't matter. So what now? <sighs> My failing was, number one, not ripping her out of that damn university where she was taught all that feminist bullshit. Oh, that was so my you, first mistake. You were married to an educated woman? An educated woman. Uh, never, 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 ever, 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 but never, 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 ever, never married an educated woman. An educated woman does not make for a good wife or a good mother because she's going to be in competition with you. Women think that they're equal to men, and they're not. But when they're educated, they're even worse. Why did you marry an educated woman? She wasn't educated at the time. And why did you let her go get educated? I thought I was supporting her. Oh, you did? Beta. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and I'm asking this because you're supposed to start thinking for yourself, right? Why did you think you were supporting your wife and getting educated. Wow. Um, well, I, I'm, I was educated, and I thought it would be of good value to her, too. I was wrong. A good value to her. Yeah. And now you realize you're wrong? I was wrong. So do you want to, do you have kids? None that live. You said what now? None that live. Good. You don't have no kids. That's good. They're all dead. They're all dead? They're all dead. Your kids are dead? All of them. What's wrong with them? Well, lost two to miscarriage, one to abortion. I don't want to talk about that one. And wow. uh, Well, I was a slut maker. Yeah. And one I lost to drugs. Oh, I see. The, yeah. So what do you think about all that that you've gone through? My choice is to become more empathetic and compassionate towards other men and what they go through. Don't feel sorry for me. I've learned lessons. Let me warn others. Yeah. Um, I think what you've gone through is amazing. Did you learn anything about yourself through that? Still learning. Still learning. But you haven't learned anything other than you want to be more compassionate toward other men? Yeah, I'm going to take this pile of shit and I'm going to grow something good out of it. Oh, really? The thing I want you to know is the tough times in life are your best times in life. It's like when life is seen to be well and all is going good, that's no good. It's okay to have it, but when you're going through uh, uh, situations and when you're going through those tough times, those are your best times in life because you're not going to grow in life until you have those good, I mean those rough times in life. But a lot of people think that the rough times are the bad times, but the rough times are the best times. I've gone, in the last 31 years, I've gone through literally hell, but it made me a better person. And um, so I want you to learn to appreciate those rough times. Those are not bad things. Um, do you want to overcome being uh, a bitch? <laughs> you bet. Let's bring it on. Let's get rid of her. You want to get that right? It's not normal for men to be angry because men, men represent God. The man came from God and the woman came from the man. But in today's world, starting with Eve, Satan is the woman's God and God is the man God. And so when you're dealing with the woman, you're dealing with evil versus good, right? And it's the man's role because good can overcome evil. Evil has no power. If it cannot deceive you or, or cause you to have fear, it has no power. And it's the man's role to bring the woman out of her hell. But anytime you go into the woman's world, you're going into hell and you will suffer and you will die. She will destroy you because you're in hell. 
A man should never move in with a woman, meaning go and live with her. He should never follow her anywhere. She should always follow him because if you follow her, you will suffer. So the way you can overcome being a, a bitch is you got to overcome your mother because mm. that spirit of the, that you have in you came from her and you have to overcome her and return to your father. And, and, and when you return to your father, God will give you back your identity before your mother turns you away from him, before she traumatized you. You must forgive your mother. Otherwise, every woman you get involved with it will, uh, will be your mother. You're attracted to what you hate. And, and so every woman, even those that seem nice, they could be white, black, Chinese, oh, Japanese, or uh, any of them. It's the same spirit. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits and principalities, right? So you're attracted to what you hate, and you're never going to be able to deal with a woman until you overcome your mother. Would it also be accurate to say I projected? You rejected? Projected. You projected? Yeah, I projected some of what you're talking about onto my wife. And Absolutely. Was, because every woman you get involved with, you'll become the boy and she'll become your mother. Men are looking for love from a woman, but women don't have love. No such thing as a woman of love, right? Women get the love from man as you get it from Christ. And so women hate men that they can control like that. They hate you, but they love it and they hate it because they need you to be strong, but they will accept it if you're weak in order to control you and destroy you. Is your mother still living? No, she died in August. And she died in August? Oh, but you're going to have to forget. How about your father? Is he still living? No, he died in 1991. You know how weak you are, right? You see how weak and... And bitchy, you are, right? Oh, I see it. I don't like it, but I see it. Yeah. Well, don't have an opinion about it. It's enough to see it and forgive them, even though they're dead. Realize just as you can't help yourself, they could not help themselves. And forgive them for it, and God will forgive you. And he will take your mother's spirit away from you and replace it with his spirit, which should have been of your father. But your father couldn't protect you from your mother because every woman he got involved with was his mother. And so he couldn't protect you. Forgive them and God will forgive you. And I, I'm telling you, man, you, you wake up and become yourself again. And you will never have fear, doubt, worry. No one or anything will ever be able to control you again. And if you should get married again, you will be able to guide your wife in the right way to go instead of being destroyed by her. What do you think about that? I think... No, we, we're hearing you. I'm sorry? We hear you. I hear you. I'm happy to be here. Any disagreement with that? None. None. <laughs> you know, God said that we must be born again, right? Everyone who is born of the woman is born into sin, what they call sin, meaning that she turns you away from your father. And when you turn away from your father, you take on her identity. And you think like a woman and you feel like a woman. And it's hard to function in life like that. But when you forgive them, God will renew your mind. He will give you back a logical mindset and you will develop self-control. And that's what women need. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for men who can lead them rather than follow them. A man should never follow a woman. Any man ever follow a woman? Yeah? Yeah. A man should never do that. It would never work out. All right. Any questions or disagreement about that? No, maybe a conversation offline, not when we're being recorded. Oh, I see. That's why you're holding it back a little bit? No, there's just a lot more truth to it, and I know what's under it. Yeah. But this is not the venue right now for that. Oh, okay. Amazing. All right. Well, I appreciate it, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody disagree with that? Uh, so what we've been doing, and I have to tell you, our, the issues in life are never, ever, ever physical. We're, it's spiritual all the time. And there's this enmity between men and women. And women can't help it because they hate the image of man. It's not her, but it's the spirit that made a home in her. And the reason that men are so subject sexually for women is because they're looking for love. The woman is your God. 
and until you overcome your mother, all women will always be your God and they will always control you. And you can never, ever, 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 ever satisfy a woman. It doesn't matter how much sex you have, how much you buy her, what you do or don't do for her. You can never, ever, ever, ever satisfy her. And so you should never try to please a woman. You should never because you can't do it. God created the woman and, and he can't even please her. The, God. <laughs> <laughs> Just think about this. God created a woman, right? He gave her nice hair. What does she do? She cut it off and wear a wig. He gave her nice breasts. She cut that off and put on fake breasts. And nowadays they're cutting off the butt and putting on fake butt. And so God can't even please her. So why are you trying to please her? It is a weakness to try to please the woman. But I understand a lot of men are doing it because they don't know it about it. They have been told, try to please the woman. The woman is wonderful. She's special. The woman is not wonderful, she's not queen, and she's not special. She's just another human being that is a female that came from the man, and man came from God. And so what they really, really need is for you to lead them. It's abnormal for, uh, it's abnormal for men to be afraid of women. Men are afraid to be earnest. How many men have been slapped by a woman? Oh, whoa. Everybody. Well, not everybody. Uh, so you've been slapped by a woman? Can you come up into the mic for me? So you got <laughs> And so what happened? I was about 19. She caught me cheating and she slapped me. So what now? I was 19. She caught me cheating. Oh, she caught you cheating? Yeah. And she slapped you? Did you, what did you do when she slapped you? You started crying? No. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, what did I do? Stop her? <laughs> you stop her? Yeah, just grab her hand and stop uh, her. You know, freak and so out how did it. she catch you cheating? Um, she caught my car at the, the girl's place. Oh, I see. Yeah. And so were you living with her at the time? No. You were I not? I was only 19. Oh, 19 yeah, years old. It was though. college, yeah. Oh, okay. And the reason I ask because what I notice is that a lot of men today have been told, do not defend yourself from the woman, that you're bigger and stronger. And so you should not defend yourself. And so in the airport and when I counsel with men around the world, they are being beat up by their wives, by their girlfriends, and they're not defending themselves. And to me, that doesn't make sense because, because of the, the, the hatred of a woman and she need men to be strong. When you let a woman smack you, all, you're bringing out the worst in her and you're making her want to do it again and again and again. But if a woman know that you're not going to put up with that kind of stuff, she wouldn't do it. It's like in this issue between black and white people, right? The black people know that, not all, not all, not all, but the black people know that white men are weak and that they're not going to speak up. So they call them names, they take their stuff away from them. And it just, over the years, it just brought out the worst in the blacks. And likewise, you're bringing out the worst in the women when you don't defend yourself. I have made it clear because I wasn't raised that way, right? I remember I, I, when I was growing up, I have like seven sisters and, and five brothers. Well, I have five brothers, but three of them, three are dead now. They're dead. But um, whenever my sister would hit me or something as a little kid, I would smack her back. And she would go crying to my mother. Oh, he hit me, he hit me. And she would ask, did you hit him? She's she like, yeah. Well, you should get hit back. If a woman hit me, I made it clear, you going down. <laughs> I ain't gonna put up with that. I remember being at a grocery store recently and there were these two black women in there, one fat with a fro and the other one kind of not so fat. And, uh, Oh, and I didn't have a mask on. And so I saw, I was right behind them in line and they were saying to the, uh, they were saying to the teller, oh, he doesn't have a mask on. And I pretend not to be paying attention. And they're like, oh, he should have a mask on. And at first the teller would try to ignore it. And they kept on it and on it. So finally the teller called the manager over say, and, and told the manager that I didn't have a mask on, right? And so, she said, sir, 
can you put your mask on? Mask on. I said, oh, okay, no problem. And I put it on, and when I put it on, I said, tell these two bitches to stay out of my business. And when I said that, they got ting. They were so mad, they started, you know how black women are, right? <laughs> <laughs> when you fight a black woman, you got like fight a black man. <laughs> and so they were like, uh, when I called them bitches, they were like, yeah, well, I kick your butt, I this, I that. They were carrying on, and I had my Trump sign, my Trump shirt. They were like, he's just a, a Donald Trump supporter. And they were running up and down the, the, the store there yelling and screaming. And they came over toward me as though they would hit me. I said, look, I would advise you not to hit me because I'm not like those little millennial men that you can hear that bounce around. I said, yeah, if y'all bitches hit me, you're going down. <laughs> I said it so loud the whole store can hear it. <laughs> and... and uh, <laughs> And they ended up, they ended up uh, leaving the store. They were all bitchy, fussing and arguing, walking out, right? But they didn't touch me. <laughs> Men are so supposed to be of love, of strength. And love is not an emotion. That love that you feel as an emotion is not real love. That love comes from hate. It comes from anger. Real love comes from God. And in real love, there is no fear, no doubt, no worry, no insecurities no depression, no anxiety. It's nothing but perfect peace. I have perfect peace in my life. And I was a beta, but at one time, but no woman ever beat me. But I was a slut maker. I used to think that I could not live without sex. When I was, before I overcame that issue, I used to think that I had to have it. And so when I would break up with one girl, I would have to find me another and have her waiting in the West Wing in order for me to break up with the one. That's how pathetic I was. Anybody else been like that? You go from woman to woman? Yeah. And I used to literally think that I could not live without sex. But it wasn't until I over, began to examine myself and I wondered why am I so weak? Why am I so emotional? Why do I have fear? And when I started to wonder about things, question things, that's when I started to understand. God caused me to see that I wasn't myself. I was in a fallen state. I had not overcome my mother. I must return to the father. And so I went to my mother at the age of 38. And I said to her, because he caused me to realize that I had this anger and I become like my mother because you become like whatever you, whoever caused you to become angry, you become like them and you take on their identity. And so I didn't know that though until he allowed me to see that. And so I knew I had to forgive my mother. And so I went because God said, when you forgive them, don't ask for forgiveness. You forgive them and God will forgive you. And he'll take that identity away from you. So I went to her at 38 and I was shaking in my boots. And I said to her, you know, all my life I've been resenting you because you tried to turn me away from my father. You seem like a mean person. And I'm sorry for resenting you. I realize now that you can help yourself and I become like you, and I can't help myself, so I become like you. And when I forgave her, he forgave me, and that was like 32 years ago, and my life had just gotten better and better and better, to a point where I've gone through hell, but I literally have no fear. And, and, and I don't feel brave, I just don't have fear. I don't, I'm, not, I'm never depressed, I'm, I never feel anxiety, I never worry about anything. I don't live in my head anymore. I live in the present because when you live in your head, all thoughts are all lies all the time and they will build you up to let you down. And when they let you down, they'll build you up. And that's why you want to jump off the bridge. So in order to be, and what, what this world needs is for men to become men again. You really need to return to the father so that you can guide the women in the right way to go because this country is going to hell in a handbasket. And the reason it's going to hell in a handbasket is because the men are weak, the women are taking over. And the last thing you want is for a woman to take over because it's not in her nature to lead. Women were not created to lead. It's not in, the, they don't know how. Even when you're raising children, the woman needs the man to guide her in how to raise his children. And so men, you got to overcome that mother's nature in order to become men again. Because it's gonna get worse if men don't wake up. And you need to be able to deal with women straight up. 
but without anger, without hating them. You need to be honest. You need to be of love. And the only way you're going to become that way is that you got to overcome the fallen state. And everyone can overcome it if you get to know yourself, if you really, really want to overcome it. There's nothing that you cannot overcome. And this has happened around the world. When I deal with men, it's the same problem. It starts in the home. And the women are going through the same thing because they're just like their mothers. They resent their mothers and they become like her. And so this thing goes on from generation to generation to generation. And if you don't overcome it, you'll find yourself living with mama until you're 60 and 70 years old. I literally know guys who are 60 years old and still living at home with mama. They tried to move out when they were younger, but the mother would not let them. And now they're stuck and they hate themselves for being there and they hate the mother for keeping them there. So you really got to take charge of your life, but you're not going to be able to do it until you overcome the nature of the woman. That makes sense? Yeah. Any, qu any question about that? Have you overcome your mother? Yes. You, you went to her? I didn't go to her, but I set a level of standards, and if they don't meet them, then I just I push it more. Yeah. And why didn't you go to her and forgive her for what she'd done to you? I don't know. I don't care. You don't care, but you no. should care. Why don't you care? It just doesn't matter to me. What, what does that mean? How old are you now? 31. Oh, what doesn't matter to you? Um, just uh, having, honestly, having my parents in my life doesn't really matter to me. Well, you don't need to have them in your life. Right. You just need to overcome them so that you don't repeat the same well, cycle. Well, I think psychologically I have overcome them because I watch you all the time. You watch me? <laughs> yes. Oh, so you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. And so why have you, are you afraid to go to her and forgive her? No, I think I just don't care. But I don't understand. Don't you want to have peace? You were created to lead. And if you, if you don't care, how will you lead? I have to forgive her to be able to lead? Yes. Because right now you have her identity. Because I have not forgiven her. Right. Okay. I don't really understand what you mean, I don't care. What is it that you don't care about? I don't know. I don't know. Do you know why you were created? No. You're not just created to be a slap maker. Right. Did you know that? I do now. <laughs> <laughs> now that you said it. <laughs> Look, guys, you guys can relax. We can have some fun. It's not a big deal. All right. Did you know, do you know why you were created? To... Uh... I'm sure it's got something to do with carrying out God's work or God's plan. Absolutely. You were yeah. created so that God could create love through you, the love from, from him through the man, right? And right. if man love is happening on the earth and family, we will have peace on earth. But as long as it's coming through the woman, we're just going to have the hell that we're uh, are dealing with. You're supposed to care. And when I say care, you don't walk around thinking, oh, I care, I care, I care, right? But it's your responsibility. You, it is so amazing to be a man, really. Not a beta male, but a real man. It is so amazing because you were created so that God could create love through you and bring peace up on the earth. But because men have not overcome their mothers, they don't know that. They, they are not bringing love, they're bringing hate. They become like what they hate. What, what do you think about that? I agree. And so how long have you been listening to me? Uh, probably about a year and a half. And are you still a slap maker? Yeah. Bird. <laughs> <laughs> and so you've heard me say, go to your mother, and you've not done it. No. And it's because you don't care. I guess, yeah. Are you afraid to go to her? No, I'm just kind of comfortable with the way I am, and I don't, I don't see how going to her is going to benefit me. Oh, so you don't believe that that, that can possibly work? Well, I don't know. Uh, I just, I, you know, I feel, I feel like a real man. I don't have anger. I, I lead. Um, I exhibit a lot of alpha male qualities. I don't think forgiving her is going to improve that. So when God said, go and forgive her, he was like, he was lying? 
you were like, you know No, what I thought God? you just said that. <laughs> no, I thought you were like. <laughs> no, God said that if you have ought with anyone, go and forgive them. Don't ask for forgiveness, but forgive them and I will forgive you. You'll be free. Couldn't I just forgive them in my mind? Do I have to go and tell them I forgive them? Right. Okay. You have to jail them because what's going to happen when you face her, you're going to get your courage back. And telling her in your mind is a cowardly way out. And it's because you're afraid to face her. And when you face her, if she start crying, that's fine. If she get angry, that's fine. If she, if she fall out and die, that's fine. Like, oh, mama did. And, and, and go into the kitchen. If she died, go into the kitchen and look at that drawer right next to the silverware. That's where the insurance paper is. <laughs> <laughs> And turn the paper in real fast before you tell your brothers and sisters. <laughs> and, and have a little cheap funeral and go live your life. But you're not, you're not going to be free until you face her. Okay. Because she took away your courage when she, made you, when she imposed a will on you. She took your courage away as well. And so uh, that's why you have to face her. You're going to shake in your boots. But it'll be the last time you ever shake with anything or anyone about anything. Well, I, I grew up in a single parent household under my oh, that's father. Even worse. Under my father, not my mother. Oh, under your father. How's yeah. same with your father? Good. Oh yeah. So you don't resent your father at all? There are some things that I, I don't agree with. He's a beta male all day. He's what? Um, he's a beta male. He grew up. He his father wasn't in his life. Right. Italian American, emotional, crazy, yelling, screaming type people. And he was raised by his mother. So he's got a lot of beta male qualities, very emotional. So uh, I don't agree with. And so have you forgiven him? Um, yes, I have. You he, went to him? Yes. Uh, okay, how did that go? He didn't like it. That's fine. It's not about them liking it or not. It's about you overcoming them. They don't, that's why God said, see, human beings don't forgive. It's impossible for a human being to forgive but what happens is you apologize for judging them. Anyone who has anger has hatred. And anyone who has hatred is judging. And when you judge, you become like what you judge, right? And so that's why God said, go and forgive them and I will forgive you. They don't have to apologize. They don't have to admit. They can get mad, but as long as you forgive them, you will go free. Your whole world will start to change. You will overcome and it'll be amazing. And life will just become amazing for you. You will find yourself dealing with all kinds of issues. Are you able to go and talk to your mother if you wanted to? Yeah, absolutely. So why have you went to, gone to your father but not your mother? I don't know. I think, I think um, understanding my father was more important to me. Oh, uh, okay. I just, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm more concerned with uh, father-son relationship than my relationship with my mother. All right. It's just well, unimportant to me. Well, you will always be controlled by women until you overcome their nature. You're going to always look to get love from them. They don't have it. Sex is not love. As a matter of fact, when you have sex, it's a, it should be a quick, quick, bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. It should be all the licking and lapping and laughing for <laughs> half an hour. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're not into that, right? Well, yeah, I'm not. I'm not looking for love on a woman. Let me get that but straight. But when you have said, do you do a quick bam, bam? Thank you, ma'am. Sometimes. Oh, okay, yeah, keep it that way, because what happens <laughs> <laughs> when you ha what happens when you go for a long time, you licking and lapping and you carrying on, then the woman is controlling you. You're worshiping her. Yeah, because you're doing it for them. Yeah, you're worshiping her. I agree. You'd be surprised. Our battle is really a spiritual battle. And it's the battle between the men and women. And a lot of women don't understand what they're doing either. And you'll be surprised how you're being controlled by evil. When it should not be that way. You should overcome evil. You should not be controlled by evil. And so do what you want, of course. But I suggest you face your mother so you can completely become the man that you should be. Mm -hmm. Because women need that. Your children are going to need that if you ever make children. Otherwise, it's not going to work. That makes sense? It does. So if you do have children, how do you prevent the mother from influencing them? And, and what's going to happen when you return to the father? You're going to see that he will provide all your needs 
And so why, why you just live it, he'll provide all your needs. And if your heart desire is to be married, he will add a woman unto you. A man should never look for a woman because when you look for the woman, you're going to find the wrong one every time. But because God loves us so much, he will add the right woman unto you and you will have a marriage that will last you until death do you part and you will be able to stand between the woman and your children so that she doesn't pass that spirit unto them. You will see it, you will have the right relationship. It will happen naturally. Mm -hmm. But if you look for a woman online, anybody ever got a woman offline by going online? <laughs> wow, what's that making? <laughs> now you know you weak when you go online to get a woman. What? <laughs> a woman, which you don't know, masculinity draws women unto you. You don't have to look for that, right? But if you have not overcome that, you think that you got to look for them, you got to buy them, you got to give them money. A lot of men are spending their money on women. They're taking them on trips. They're buying them expensive things. They're Maybe. putting them up in apartments and things like that. <laughs> I know. And you don't have to do that. You shouldn't do that because all you're doing is encouraging the woman to use you, to hate you. And women don't respect men that do that. I remember in high school, I was dating this girl in 11th or 12th grade. And at that time, we had like bubblegum machines at school, and it cost 25 cents to get one. And so one day she said to me, hey, Jesse, you got 25 cents? I'm like, yeah, why? She's like, I want to get a bubblegum. I'm like, wow, this woman tried to use me. <laughs> and so I gave her the 25 cent and I dumped her <laughs> because I thought she would use me for my money. Because in those days, men were, was weak like that. We didn't give women money. Sometimes we would take them out and buy a little McDonald's kind of dinner, but we didn't worship women the way men are doing it today. And, and because we knew and understood the order of things. And so uh, men are weak to women, and it's just making things worse. It's not making it better, guys. It's not going to get better until you overcome that. And you see how to treat her in the right way because you would treat her the way that you're being treated from your, by your father within, right? Everything you're looking for, everything you want, your talent, your purpose, everything you want is inside of you. It's not on the outside. It's on the inside. And when you forgive, you start living from within rather than without. And then when you live that way, you cannot go wrong. You must, you must return to the father. You cannot go wrong, right? So I want to encourage you guys, you got to, as individuals start questioning things, overcoming that fallen state. Otherwise, your kids are going to suffer and each generation will get worse and worse and worse because the father is weak. The father got to be strong and you're not going to be strong until you overcome that emotional state which come from your mother. You were not created that way. It did not come from God. It's abnormal for men to be emotional like that. You got to do it. Now, you can suffer and die. I mean, no sweat off my back. I'm just here to tell you, if you want to be free, you got to overcome the female nature. You must be born of the Father. You must return to your Father. The worst thing that can happen to a man and a female, but especially a male, is to be turned away from his Father. Our issue is the spiritual battle. It's not physical at all. Any question about that? No, I watch you all the time, man. I, yeah. yeah, it helped me a lot, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, take the next step and go and forgive your mother. And you haven't seen anything, man. Will do. You will, it will be as though you never went through anything. It'll blow your mind. The only thing that keeps you down is that emotional state and that mindset. All right? Yeah. Well, thank you, man. Thank you, Jesse. You, you, Jesse has helped me see a lot of things very clearly. And honestly, yeah. after watching him just about every day during lunch, I mean, I get to laugh and it's really funny. But he's helped me see things a lot clearly. And... Uh, Prove my life pretty, pretty Good, man. drastically. So watch this guy. Go see your mother, all right? Do, all right. So, <clears throat> any question for me? Yeah. Anybody by any? Okay, come to the mic. Hey, Jesse. Hey, Sergio. <laughs> yeah, nice to see That's you. That's Sergio the Music Boy. <laughs> you guys you. heard of Sergio the Music Boy? <laughs> I do a radio show uh, Monday through Friday, I guess podcast, and it's on from six to nine, and we play Sergio music on there. He just, came, what's the name of your new song? Sergio, oh, uh, Dushi. 
Douchey. Yeah, it's on my YouTube. Just yeah, search very nice song. So check it out. Go to jessaleepeterson.com uh, <laughs> or Sergio. What's your thing? Yeah, Sergio Music Boy. Sergio Music yeah, Boy. Yeah. All right. Part. And Sergio used to be a beta. <laughs> <laughs> I was still working on it. Oh, okay. Go so ahead. yeah, I had a question because I was talking to attendees here and some of the speakers and uh, I hear that they're talking about how um, we're not slot makers, but that it's the women's choice and it doesn't make us slot makers. So I kind of wanted to hear uh, your perspective on that. It's a woman's choice? Yeah, so it's like they're, they're saying that, um, oh, it's, it's not us, we're not doing it, it's the women choosing it, so we're not really slum makers, are we? Well, women are, especially millennial women and younger, right? They are sluts today. It's hard to not to see a slut. When I'm at the gym and these women wearing these tight clothes all up their butt and, and, and they're looking around to see who's looking at them. But what women are, women are looking for, father's love, because their mothers have turned them away from their fathers and that emptiness that all human beings has when they, when they're not close to their father growing up, it leaves a void in your life. And in that void, you start looking outside to fulfill that void. And that's what women are doing. Women are looking for a father's love and instead they get screwed, right? It's not the woman's fault. It's her job in that father's state to tempt you in order to control you because women are not that into sex, but they'll do it because they are like sex dealers and men are sex addicts. And so women will do it to control you, but they prefer not to do it. They prefer you to correct them and bring them out of that state. And it is the man's fault, starting at home with the fathers and the mothers and things, but it's the man's fault that she's in that condition because he won't bring her out of that state. He doesn't understand that he needs to overcome his mother so that he can bring her out of that condition. And if you notice, women are getting worse today. As men get weaker, Women are getting worse. They're not good for house, I mean, for wives. They're no good for mothers because they need the men to help them overcome. Yes, she is responsible for, for her action, but it's really the responsibility of, man, of the man not to take advantage of her weakness, to resist her, uh, uh, her seduction. And when you get married, you can guide her in the right way to go. You have a good wife and, a, and kids, and we can create so, a new generation. So every time like we go out and like, let's say we're trying to look for women out in the streets and uh, every time we see one and you know, we tempt her or whatever, we talk to her, we have this intention of having sex with her. It's, it's, really, uh, it's really us to blame? Yes, because you're looking for a mama's love. You might not realize it, but that's what you're looking for. But once you overcome mama, when you deal with women, you're gonna deal with them in a perfect way. It's not that you won't deal with them, but you won't be subject to them, they'll be subject to you. And you'll be able to get to know them. You will not have sex with them before marriage. So you can see if this is the right person for me and she will see if this is the right person for her. And when, you, when and if you do get married, you wouldn't have all the issues that we're having today. Divorces would be non-existent or less. Every, your kids will have a chance, but it is the man's fault because if he resists Eve, she, should, she can't tempt him. It's her job to tempt you, but it's your job to resist it. But you can't resist it if you don't have not overcome your mother because you're looking for mama's love. All right. So you go out looking for women? No. You don't go out looking for them? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. I do go out, have fun, but not with that in mind. You should have fun, you should enjoy women. Enjoy human being, period, but enjoy women, but not for that reason. Women need men to be strong, but men cannot be strong until they return to their natural state of being. That's the only way it's gonna happen, guys. No other way, because they would deal you sex just to control you, and sex is not love. It's just an ego feeling. It makes you feel good, and it's never enough. The more you get, the more you want, right? Because it's just like going to a drug dealer, and he's giving you your, your, your drug free at first. You become addicted you keep going back, and after a while, it's not enough. You want more, you want more, then you end up destroying yourself. And sex, the only reason that we need sex is to make children, to get married and make babies. If you don't want to have children, there's no reason to have sex. No reason at all. 
Y'all mighty quiet. Why y'all so quiet? <laughs> what the? Nah. All right, well, that's all I wanted to ask. All right, thank yeah. you, man. I no appreciate problem. it. Absolutely appreciate it. Any other questions about anything? Yes, sir. Yes. First of all, this is my first time seeing you, and this is absolutely mind-blowing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so a lot of, uh, I guess I would say, conventional wisdom is as men, we have to have consistent sex with our women to keep them satisfied and from strength. Is that something that you disagree with wholeheartedly, or what are your thoughts on that? Having consistent sex to do what now? To keep her satisfied. To keep her satisfied? Correct. Oh. Is that, and your question is what? Do you disagree with that if you're saying? 100%. Okay. Because women use sex to control the man, and, it, and when you stop having sex with her or you get it under control, she'll say to you, oh, you don't love me. You don't care about my emotions. You don't care about how I feel, right? What she's really saying is, you are not letting me control you anymore. I can't control you. I used to have control over you, and now you're not doing it. That's what she's saying. Yeah. And so, but it's best not to do that. A woman loves a man that she can't control, and she's always trying to tempt you to bring it down, but she loves. That's why it's good not to have sex with them before marriage, so that when you do get married, you can make all the babies you need to make, and then once you make all your babies, then stop having sex. Because if you're not going to make babies, there's no reason for sex. So when they're saying, you're not meeting my needs, you're not being my emotion, I feel disconnected, really what they're saying is, you're not letting me control you. And I used to control you when I first met you. You catered to me. You gave me what I want. We had a lot of sex. They're just saying they had control over you. That's all they'll complain about. Don't give in to that, guys. Otherwise, they will destroy you. So just a quick observation and another quick question if yes. you don't mind. Um, so you're saying sex is used by women to control us? One, 100%. Okay. I women understand. are sex dealers and men are sex addicts. Okay. Question two, marriage is obviously ideal, but the legal ramifications of divorce, you know, push a lot of us away from getting married, involving the state and the government yeah. in our affairs. How do you you know, avoid that or? If you do it the right way, you wouldn't have to worry about that. If you meet a woman in the right way, you don't have sex with her before you marry her, so you can date for a while, get to know her, she'll get to know you, and you will see that this is the right woman to marry. And it's not a woman that would do that to you, right? Because you gotta realize the nature of a woman is evil, and she cannot help it. So when you get with her, you start having sex with her, you're giving her authority over you, and so if you do divorce, she will destroy your children, she'll destroy you, she'll take everything you got just to get back at the man because that nature hates him. But if you do it right, you love what's right with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, along with nothing else, love God first and then love your neighbor as yourself, it wouldn't happen to you. Understood. But because you're doing it the wrong way, you're, getting, you're doing it in darkness, you're setting yourself up to be destroyed by the woman. It will not go right when you start out doing it the wrong way. And I've been there, I've done that, and I understand that. But you gotta start doing it the right way if you want it to turn out right. If you have sex with a woman before marriage, it ain't gonna work because you're doing it the wrong way. If you get with an older woman, it ain't gonna work because you're doing it the wrong way. A man should never, ever, 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 ever get involved with an older woman. You get involved with mama and she will control you, and it will not work. But we gotta do it the right way in order for it to work. Because the courts are not for the man. They are on the side of the woman because this world is of evil, controlled by Satan, right? And it, Satan is working through the woman. So she's like ruling the world because her daddy, Satan, is of the world. Our Father is of heaven and inside of us. If we live that way, we can defeat the evil. So when you do it wrong, you can expect the court to do it that. But if you do it the right way, the courts cannot interfere with your life because you'll marry the right kind of woman. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Did you overcome your mother? I will today. <laughs> so, oh, you didn't know about it until now, right? No, sir. Yeah, okay. All right. Any other questions? 
Okay. Well, I have a few points and then I'm going to close this out. Um, the man in the blue shirt. Yes. Can you come over to the mic for me? He's like, what the? <laughs> what the? Hi, uh, Steve. Hi. What? I said hi. What? Hi. 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 How old are you? 24. 24. Did, did, did you know that all thoughts are all lies all the time about anything? Sorry, could you say that one more time? Did you know that all thoughts are all lies all the time? No. Did you know that there's no such thing as a true thought? No. Why do you know that? Because I never thought about it that way. Uh, do you think you create your own thoughts? Yes. And how do you do it? By just thinking. How do you, how do you start just thinking? What yes. are the steps to just start thinking? From what you believe, what you see, your surroundings. Give me an do. example how you create your own thoughts. I'd say. Uh, Listen to me. You know how you got up this morning, you got dressed, you did all, you can tell me that stuff, right? So, how did you create your own thought? The first one you had this morning, how did you create that? I guess just routine. Can you give me the steps of how you did it? Well, you got to take care. Well, I know I got to take care of myself in the morning. So right. that's to go through the steps of what you want to do. Yeah. Brush your teeth, shower, use the bathroom, all that stuff. Get ready for the day. Amazing. It's, like, it's just like nature. Like uh, so you're the creator of your own thoughts, right? I wouldn't. Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. And so do you sometimes create thoughts that bring pain upon you and cause you to do the wrong things? Yes. Why would you create thoughts that would hurt you? I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, and the re I, I have a reason for asking guys this, right? But let me ask, um, have you ever wondered, why am I creating thoughts that would bring pain upon me and make me make the wrong decision and things like that? Yeah, time to time. I, just, I, I don't usually have an answer for that. You haven't got an answer for that? No. Is it possible you're not the creator of your own thoughts? Yeah, it's possible. Because the one thing I want you guys to know, you don't create thoughts. They are not from God and they are not from you. And every thought that you get is a lie. No such thing as a true thought. All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. And I'm saying this because I really want you guys to get to know yourself, to pay attention to what's going on. We really, really pay attention to thoughts. They make you think about the future that doesn't exist, or they make you think about the past that doesn't exist. They won't let you live in the present. And all we have, all we have is right now. Everything else is an illusion. Whatever happened yesterday, it's over. It doesn't even exist anymore. But Satan will remind you to make you think that it exists now. And when today is bad for you, he'll tell you what tomorrow will be better. And when tomorrow comes, if it comes, then it's even worse and now you're disappointed. But if you can learn to just live in the present rather than living in your head, you will have an amazing life. Life will just unfold for you. But you got to overcome the fallen state first. You are not your thought. Anyone that thinks that they, they are of their thoughts, they have the mindset of a woman. That's why women are so crazy. They live in their heads. And their thoughts make them feel good, make them feel bad, make them feel up or down, and they live by that. Men are not supposed to live in your head. You're supposed to live in the present, where the Father is, not in your imagination. All thoughts are all lies all the time. And you're not going to be able to overcome them until you overcome your mother's identity. You really have the mindset. And then your mind will be renewed and you will begin to develop a logical, simple, right in the present mindset. And you cannot go wrong when you do that. It's impossible. But when you live in your head thinking about yesterday and tomorrow, you're going to screw up all the time. You're going to judge yourself, you'll judge others, and you will not have a good life. So you must overcome that so you can overcome the mindset. You got to overcome that female nature so you can overcome that illogical mindset. 
You don't create your own thought, man. All thoughts are all lies. And I want you to notice because if men don't wake up and come back to common sense, it's over. It's going to get worse before it get better because the men are weak. And there's nothing worse to a woman, to a children, than to have a weak man, weak father, weak husband, weak boyfriend or whatever. So you got to overcome the thoughts, all right? All right. Any, question, any disagreement with that? You guys can disagree, we can argue, we can yell, whatever. But we got to get it right. Yes, sir. Um, how would you start? How would you start to overcome, as you say? How, number one, you got to start and get to know yourself. If you know yourself, you're going to see that there's a battle going on between you, I mean, and not you, which is the darkness of imagination and the light of God that lives within your soul or your belly. There's a warfare going on in there. And you can't fight that. You just have to observe it. And then you see how to deal with the, the warfare that's going on, on the outside, inside of others. But you've got to get to know yourself. You must overcome the spirit, the identity of your mother, and return to your father, and life will naturally start happening for you. But you've got to overcome anger. Okay. Do you still live with your mother? For now, yeah. How old are you? 24. Bird. Um, do you know what a beta is? Yeah. You ever heard of beta? Yeah. Oh. Uh, you heard my show before? Uh, no. Oh, good. Uh, why are you still living at home with mother, with it's, mama? It's just for the time being to like, uh, it's not, t it's not permanent. It's just temporary. How old are you? 24. It's permanent. <laughs> you should have left gone when you turned 18 years old. A man should never, ever, ever be at home after 18 years old. Except for some type of emergency, right? Sometimes you just can't help him. But any man that is home at, at, stay home at eight, after 18 is a beta male. Why don't you move, man? What the? I guess it was always like instilled in, in me to like always like take care of the mother as you get older. Take so, care of the mother? Yeah. You're not your mother's boyfriend. You're not her husband. You're not responsible for your mother. Your parents were responsible for you. They're supposed to take care of you. It wasn't a, an investment. You're not an investment. They decide to make a baby. It's their responsibility to take care of you. And it's your responsibility as an adult to get away and start your own thing. And then if you want to take care of them, you do it in the right way. But it's not your responsibility to take care of your mother. I, I did this show one day how mothers are horny for their sons. Did y'all know your mother want to have sex with you? Your mother's horny for you. That's what, mothers would get rid of your father and make you her husband. You know something before she let you go. And then if you do, if you are fortunate enough to get away, let's say you move to West Hell. But while you were growing up, your mother would say, I don't like West Hell. I would never live in West Hell, right? But then you grow up and you move to West Hell, she'll move to West Hell just to control you. And if you're dating, she won't like your girlfriend. I don't like her. I don't like the way she treats you. I don't like this, right? It ain't her business. She, she, the woman not dating her, right? But the mothers that keep their sons around like that or follow you around or call every day to check on you, they're horny for you. They want to have sex with you. Isn't that an amazing idea? What do you think about that? I didn't know that. <laughs> Otherwise, why would your mother need you around? I don't know. She doesn't. Because of that anger, they have a, they're horny for their sons. And that's why they, de they destroy your relationships. They destroy your, your marriages. They'll want to move in with you and live with you and your wife. And they'll divide you from your wife. And the wife is mad because they are horny for their own sons. You got to overcome mama so you can take control of your life. And here's what I recommend. I, on my uh, website, uh, <coughs> silentprayer.video, on my YouTube channel, right, Nate? Uh, what? www.silentprayer.com www silentprayer.com I mean dot video www.silentprayer.video I want you to start doing that so you can settle down and when you settle down you start to see from within and God will guide you he will show you how to overcome all these things 
and you will overcome by getting to know yourself, all right? But you got to pay attention to self so you can forgive her for what she's done. She set you up for you to stay there as long as you can. And if you move, she's going to follow you by making you feel guilty. You're not responsible for your mother. Your father is responsible for her, not you. And if she ran your father off, she's responsible for herself, not you. So I recommend you get two jobs, three jobs. You move out and you start dealing with the issues of life so you can grow up. Men grow up by dealing with the issues of life. You don't grow up by staying at home with mama. If you don't deal with situations, you can't grow into manhood. You got to welcome tough situation. Don't get upset about them. Overcome them and your life will get better. But as long as you're protected from them, you only get worse in life. I remember when I was growing up, my grandparents and my mother told me, at 18, you're out of here. You're going to leave here at 18. I'm like, well, where am I going? They're like, I don't know and I don't care, but you're out of here, right? And I grew up on a plantation down in Alabama under the Jim Crow laws and all that. But what they did, they taught us to work and to be responsible, how to save our money, to take care of ourselves, right? So when I turned 18, I finished high school that May, and I moved out and moved to Indiana, got me a job, moved to California. And I went through, I've gone through hell, but it made a man out of it, made me better, not bitter. And my, my mother didn't follow me anywhere. My grandmother or grandfather didn't follow me. That's abnormal, man. You got to get a job and get away from your mother. You don't owe her anything. But forgive her for doing that to you, though. She couldn't help it. What do you think about that? I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. Any questions about that? Because my time is up. Any questions about that? No. All right. Well, forgive her, man, and go live your life. Get two jobs, three jobs. You can do it, but you got to get away from mama. Don't be afraid to take care of yourself. Thank All you. right. So, any questions? No. All right. Thank you, man. Thank I appreciate you. it. All right. <clears throat> Mr. Jesse Lee Peterson. Uh, <clears throat> so here's what I want to recommend. I know I'm going to be talking tomorrow, but you got to take responsibility for your life, guys. It's abnormal to be weak. It's abnormal to have anxiety, depression, to be angry, to be insecure. You were created by God to be of love. And love is not a feeling. It's not something you can taste or touch. It has no fear, no doubt, no anything so that he can create love through you. And we will have, the world would be amazing if men were to wake up, all right? So go to my website at jesse lee at uh, uh, www.silentprayer.video. Check us out at jessaleepeterson.com or rebuildingtheman.com, all right? Thank you all so much, I appreciate it. Thank you, Jesse. Woo.